Okay, so um, <coughs> I stick with English. Uh, my name is Volker Grasmuck, uh, and we are moving into a country which also has some issues with human rights. That is Facebook. So I'm very happy that I did not delete my Facebook account yet. Uh, so I'm not on it, but I do get email notifications every once in a while. And yesterday I got uh, the message that I got a message from Ivan Zazurski on uh, Facebook. So I went there and I found out that he is actually in town for an open access conference. Uh, and uh, he asked me to meet uh, and I asked him back whether we should meet at MPA. And by the way, wouldn't he uh, like to join us in the public conversation? Uh, and he agreed. So please welcome Ivan Zazurski. <laughs> he is the head of the Department of New Media and Communication Theory at Moscow State University. He is the publisher of an online daily news site, uh, Chastny Correspondent. Uh, is involved in open access publications and repositories and aggregators. Um, he is also a film producer. So if you haven't seen the link on the announcement for today's NPA, there is, uh, there is a link to Generation P. Uh, and if you haven't seen that, it's a very uh, amusing uh, sort of insight into a post-Soviet Russia that I can highly recommend. So, Facebook. Um, you are one of the few people... Do we have another microphone? Yes. So, people are peculiar about their online communications channels and a few of my friends communicate primarily, nearly exclusively, over Facebook and all the other of my friends are in Brazil. And <laughs> you are the other one. So uh, let's start with the online environment in Russia. What, what role does Facebook play there? Then there's um, sort of a Russian version of Facebook V contacted used to be called, now it's um, VK officially. Um, and that, uh, I looked it up, and it's, it's, it's uh, so, so Wikipedia says it's the most popular site in Russia. Is that true? How do, you, how, how do people communicate with each other and inform each other about, about current news nowadays? Well, um, I certainly use Facebook uh, a lot, but uh, I'm not I'm not typical in this sense because uh, I'm a Muscovite. I, I live in Moscow, in Petersburg, so uh, it is a more cosmopolitan crowd. Basically, uh, those people who are on Facebook are the people who can uh, uh, handle uh, another language, who can read English or German or French, and they keep in touch or we keep in touch with our friends abroad like you and uh, everybody else. Uh, and also, I'm, I don't know, I like Facebook more, but uh, it's uh, also, I have uh, 100,000 subscribers to, to my Facebook account, so I can vent my rage, and uh, you know, uh, it, it helps me a lot, because I'm, uh, uh, I can't, uh, I don't make uh, fist fights, but I'm often, I'm very often distressed and I find that Facebook is the perfect window for this sort of, uh, you let go of this team and then you feel better. But occasionally I think it has uh, uh, unintended consequences when so many people, like in Paris, you know, when everybody does feed the rage into the system, then uh, it blows up. And you have Arab Spring or Ukraine or something else you, when you pump too much energy into social media, social media is a new invention. Basically, it is the unknowable. It is the frontier of science to study it. We don't know it. It's alien to us. It's new technology. So it, I am a communication theory also person. So I subscribe to Toronto theory, 
of communication, which says that every time there is a shift in media platform, the society, the personality, everything is restructured completely because there is a new um, network of communication, new science system, new reflexes, everything. So I think what we're seeing is a erasure of personality and more like group think, group action, cyberbullying. Uh, well, uh, every time we have a new platform, we become wild again because every, all the gentrification that we do to our communication, when we like have old media, we're used to it, we know how to calibrate our communication strategies. We know exactly what we're doing. On new media, we become... Um, uh, McLuhan had a very nice word for it. it. It's the new prosthesis. So we become very narcissistic. And uh, we, uh, as, in so, uh, as on very high speed, we forget about ourselves. We kind of uh, give in to it. And uh, it, uh, as I said, it has unintended consequences because uh, I think uh, social media are faster than our brains. So uh, things that happen on electronic media are faster than what we can make out of them. So it is a very strange thing, actually, what I'm witnessing. As for your question about Vkontakte, it is. It was a. a, a it was. I wouldn't say it's a. It, it is sort of Russian Facebook, but it was. A, it had a different driver. It's a mixture of Facebook and YouTube because basically when Durov started this project, uh, this is a guy from Petersburg who lived in Berlin after he went away from Russia, and then now he's at large. Maybe he's here. Maybe there. I don't know. Digital nomad. A digital no Yes, the real digital, the digital nomad. Yes. So um, uh, he, he he started by uh, uh, by making a student website for you know like in the beginning of the internet, everybody used to collect the cultural artifacts like songs, pictures, whatever texts, just to post it so that everybody could have it. And he made this Durov.com. Uh, website where he put everything, like all the films, everything he could get. And he built a social network basically around it. So it was kind of fenced, and it was of course piracy, but uh, at the same time, when nothing was digitized, it was also the kind of the only access to those things. And something grew around it, which is, uh, which is completely different from Facebook. Not because software is so much different. I think f Facebook is, has more complicated algorithms. I think Facebook is better at handling multimedia content. But uh, Vkontakte is uh, a different audience, younger Russians, mostly Russian speakers, and Ukraine and uh, all these former Soviet Union. Uh, and uh, Eastern Europe sometimes, uh, it's, I mean, uh, people like it. But it's, uh, it's very different. In, in the feeling you get from it, uh, also from the public there is. So th this is, I'll give you, in, in a nutshell, I'll give you the difference of the audience of these two products. Facebook is for people, for grown-ups, and for people with, de with degree, maybe, in Russia. Because it's kind of foreign product, yeah, you need to have interests that enable this usage. And the Vkontakte is for students and for younger people. So, uh, and, there's, and it's more widespread, like everybody has a Vkontakte account. And uh, it's basically like WeChat in China. I would say it's not Facebook, it's WeChat. But except for the payment systems, because, you know, Durov had to uh, go away from this company because he had issues with law enforcement people because they wanted to have his, uh, they wanted to read the messages for some uh, communication between protesters, and he said, I'm not going to do this. And, um, and they didn't give it a second thought. They uh, considered it a sort of betrayal on his part, that he wouldn't give information. And, uh, you know, in the States you have lawyers, everything. In Russia we have a, uh, a kind of disregard for the law. Like, uh, we believe in, uh, it's not that we don't have laws, it's not that we don't have lawyers, but uh, we believe in justice. It's different. We believe in faith and justice, you know? 
because uh, if if you if you believe in law in Russia, you will always be disappointed. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. Law beats you, and you beat the law. I'll tell you a story. I, I had an accident. <laughs> I had an accident. I had, I, 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 Volker knows me. When I start talking about Russia, it's always crazy. So I had an accident, and these people, they, they really kind of kicked me. My car was destroyed completely. But they also wanted to make me guilty, because the guy was a driver, and if he was guilty, he would lose the job. And uh, when I came to police, the guy said, okay, they say you're guilty. And I was like making the wrong turn, and the guy was going on red. You know, something like this. I, I wasn't completely innocent, but not uh, I wasn't going on red, you know, nothing like this. And uh, he said, what, what are we going to do? <laughs> I said, okay, let's make him guilty, and then we split the money. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? This, uh, I only did it once. But I, it's not that I'm telling you that you do it every time. But I mean, I, f I was looking like I was into the corner, pushed into the corner, like what I should do. I offered the deal. So in Russian culture, you understand, in communist times, where could we get reg the respect for the law? So there was no reason. I know you're German people. You're very different. We like you very much, <laughs> really. You understand, because uh, we, we like your best qualities very much. We appreciate it, but um, we have a different. Uh, fa we had different. We also had terrible twentieth century. You remember, so but but we had a different trajectory, which is more more tragic, less tragic. I don't know, but uh, currently uh, we the the laws are used to uh, put pressure on uh, social media. Because uh, our, our, our politicians, our, media, our political system, our experts, because they don't understand what is going on. <laughs> <laughs> they, think they, are, they think they are a victim to some sort of aggression. You know? So basically, the only problem we had, when Gorbachev, you remember Gorbachev? Was a really nice guy. Okay? He started to reform the KGB. And KGB fought back and gave us Yeltsin. You understand? You understand? You understand? And every KGB took its own country. You understand? <laughs> you understand? So what, what are we supposed to do? So, but but at, but at the beginning it looked much nicer. So, but this, these people they don't have expertise in new media, so they don't understand that Zuckerberg or they think it's Zuckerberg or CIA or somebody is plotting against them, you know. But you have great media theorist Nicholas Luhmann, who uh, is talking about autopoiesis. So this new unknown media has its autopoiesis, where uh, everybody when everybody vents their rage. <laughs> you understand? It becomes a force, a power. You know, it has to be reckoned with. So, and you cannot shape this power. It's very hard to shape it in the making. It's very hard to make borders for it somehow. But, uh, but they try to, by de-anonymizing the media, like in China. You know, in China you can't participate in, s in, in new media if you are anonymous. They try to make special laws for extremists, for hate language, basically. But uh, they don't call it hate language, so it sounds stupid and it works in a bad way. So basically, they're trying to figure out how to work with this force that the new technologies have unleashed. And uh, they don't have an idea. But I have an idea. Because I come from different time. I come from the 90s. I'm a journalist, and uh, I'm used to the media being uncontrollable. And in, in time, and, uh, I, I understand what is autopoiesis. So I know to that to shape this communication system, you need to work with it in a different way. You need to work, uh, you need to work in so-called white strategies. 
you need to you need to build up the context and you need to hack the meanings to create proper settings for national idea and everything i'll give you an example for russia the good national idea would be to be an ecological superpower you know we should be paranoid about people wasting nature you know something like this so we need uh, to put the right setting because we are the largest country in the world and we are mostly wilderness and i think it is our job to keep it this way because otherwise we'll all be dead in 50 years or something you know so uh yeah sorry Let's uh, i'm drifting away drifting away yes <laughs> indeed and we, we we will come to your medium indeed <laughs> but facebook as a medium of rage i mean this is this i find that quite remarkable and seeing understanding this and working twitter with twitter is even better at that twitter as, is better as a positive there. strategy also with uh, contact here i mean a lot of uh, people who have been banned from social media in germany uh, can be found there so indeed so but but that's sort of um a public group oriented kind of communication leaving friends and family aside uh, and obviously everybody understands that the FSB is there as well and listening but then next to Facebook there's WhatsApp and next to contact you there is Telegram yes Telegram and is the company that Durov who made contact he built it up uh, I think he, this is his real triumph triumph this is his victory the grand from grand V Yes, and uh, I, I think it's a I think it's a great system, but uh, I think it's a raw product still. I think he didn't have time to properly work on it yet, uh, but I think it's he's going to do miracles with it because he launched because he's going to launch the cryptocurrency, the gram, and uh, I think that uh, he's you know his uh, his his favorite writer is Ayn Rand. You know Ayn Rand, yes. Yes, but but not in the not in a bad way, Polker. Not in a bad way. <laughs> you see, who is Ayn Rand? Ayn Rand is a girl from Petersburg, who emigrated from via Crimea, and narrowly escaped the Red Terror. I mean, she narrow Red Terror is like when every third person is killed, you know. So she narrowly escaped it. So for her, capitalism is uh, a rosy picture. I mean, she is romantic about capitalism. Because the, way, the same way people were romantic about communism, she became romantic about capitalism, about the power of a single person to shape events, history, about how powerful you can be if people don't put you know, obstacles, if, if nobody just uh, uh, makes you feel bad or something like this, if nobody pursues so some kind of social agenda. And Durov, uh, uh, coming from Russia as well, is a libertarian and uh, in this sense he's Ayn Rand fan you know and he's building up a system which is decentralized with contact uh, which which can be used for secret communication although there are you, you know you're, you're grown-ups you have to know there are no secrets in this age I mean you have to live like uh, superstars these days everything can be hacked Every, everybody can have everything you can't say a word without it being you know heard by somebody else. So this end-to-end -end encryption of WhatsApp and at least as an option in Telegram is sort of fictional, you would say. Uh, it, it's not fictional, but uh, you know, I, I'm coming from Russia and uh, um, I'm a journalist and uh, uh, I, I can't uh, make a bet that my communications are invisible. That's pointless. I, I took uh, a contrarian strategy. Being a public personality, I become super public. So uh, I'm kind of, what you see is what you get, you know? <laughs> so uh, I, I, don't, I don't keep, and I, I've, you know, I've been this way since childhood. Because uh, uh, I, had, I had trouble at school, and I, th I, th I thought people were talking about me. And then I, I understood that uh, anything that I say or do can be used against me at a very early age. And in this, that's why I was ready for this digital world. 
because in the digital world, everything can be, everything is transparent, everything, potentially. So whatever you do, you shouldn't bet on the information falling into the wrong hands, or that it shouldn't fall. You have to, you have to, you have to make, a, you have to make a rational choice. You have to use the best ways to avoid it. But if you're, if you're not a billionaire, uh, the chances that uh, people will dig deeply into your life are very small. And most of the cyber criminals are not against you. I mean, uh, they're not so romantic. They are after your money, or th and that's it. <laughs> or they have a personal revenge agenda against you, like uh, in, your, in, in the case of this uh, noble lady. So, uh, if if um, if you are not involved into a in a fight with people who use dirty tactics, if you are if you are very open, and if you do the right things at the right time, now there's nothing you should be afraid of. That's that's uh, that's that's the way I think you should all see the world today, because if you have secrets, if you have stuff, you know, s sooner or later it will come to haunt you. So away from secret and secret communication that I was inquiring about to public communication. So towards from, from the social media side towards journalistic editorial activity. And uh, so the network public sphere in Russia, obviously you felt some discontent about that. Uh, that led you to found Chastny Correspondent, so private correspondent, founding a news online newspaper without the paper part, obviously, at this time and age is daring to say at it's least it's in it's Russia. It's so charity, it's charity, guys. <laughs> please tell us the story, how I that happened. I burned through $3 million of cash. And uh, it gave me nothing also, but, but a very good newspaper. It's not a business. But uh, I, I kept firing people until there were only like two or three. And then I figured out how to make some money on it. And then I, uh, and this is, this is how miraculously it survived. And uh, it, is th it is the first uh, Russian quality, I, I, I underline quality, user-generated content news website. It's, it's a kind of news and commentary. The idea is that our understanding of contemporary world is uh, by necessity very shallow, especially in the time of social media, because rage is not thoughtful. <laughs> you understand? So people are very trust, uh, trustful. People trust what they see. You know, the picture, as if the picture that can't deceive. But the picture is always a, a manipulation, you know, because it leaves so much out of the picture. So uh, the newspaper I, studied, I, I started was to, give to, to, to bring back complexity. And uh, I, s I would say one thing, that being German, you're, you're very lucky. Because you have very strong German publishers who can afford to have so much newsprint and you can have it. It's, I think it's, it's, it's gorgeous. I, I don't read these newspapers in German. I'm not sure they're all good. But uh, at least they're fat, and there must be something in it. <laughs> so uh, our newspapers are becoming small, like Soviet times, you know? And, and, they, and, they, and they feel a little bit like Soviet times. But this is, this is there is no, you know, there, there is no uh, conspiracy in that. It's not even bad. It's like, you know, people who were happy when they were young, and like everybody is happy at some point, you know, when he's young. They try to bring back whatever they know. Okay? So uh, the world, in my view, is structured by social consensus that people have. Uh, it's not about power. You know, I come from Russia, I tell you, power is not important. Don't worry about it. Russia is India, basically. A Gandhi, Gandhi could work with India without power, by moral authority. So we are coming back to the age of moral authority. 
And uh, the, the true power is social consensus that comes when knowledge and values are aligned. When you have knowledge and value aligned, this social media, they are like a power network. So when you align it, you have like a thousand volts, you know, coming out. If, if, you, if, you, dis, if, if you kind of, if you disrupt it, if you make it a, a rage vent machine, then it is uh, like a nuclear bomb, you know? But if you align your communications, if, if you align your values and your uh, ideas and your knowledge and make a meaningful picture, then this energy can work very well. So I am investing into knowledge management because I think this is our only hope. There is only one hope for humanity. It's called uh, knowledge. And uh, people are still ignorant. And uh, the more they think they know something, the less they really understand what's going on. Because they don't, you know, in social media time, people don't have time to think. So w because our expertise is not available at the speed of communication. Communication is faster. To check something, you need to go somewhere, do something, call someone, look it up. It takes time. <coughs> Emotional reaction is instant. So y y everybody's kind of hacked by social media. We are wired in the wrong way. We, th I think social media, in general, they bypass the brain. Or th they, th there is, there is <laughs> understand, yes? <laughs> Okay, very good. Thank you. <laughs> so there is uh, uh, some part of the brain, like the neocortex is excluded, you know? Only the violent, the wildest parts are. <coughs> because it's emotional mind that is most active. And uh, we need to build up the complexities. Uh, there are the, the universal high education is, is, is uh, the only means how we can achieve it. And uh, at the time of education, uh, all the knowledge that exists in this world should be available, translated from language to language uh, with int intellectual intelligence helping us. Intellectual intelligence, how do you say? artificial intelligence, yes? The algorithms of translation. And, uh, you know, it's, it's good because at some point we may, un we may remember our history. Because as you understand, you're, you're, I think most of you are Christian, or you come from the you come from the civilization that is built by the book. And the first book was the Bible, so it's Bible, the book, everything is. So what the, we have information like we, were, we like we exist a couple of thousand years, and we like don't know as outside of ten thousand years there are almost no cultural artifacts, but we have ancient texts in Chinese. We have ancient texts in Sanskrit in India, so if we if we could if we could have them translated, and if we could look at them one against the other, if we could also dig up something, then maybe we'll remember what happened. Because I don't think it was something nice. If we forget something, it's usually not something nice. In the, in the, in the Bible, there there is the th the flood, and there is ice age and floods on this planet. And it is definitely the climate change that is causing them. So I think we are in the golden age of, how do you call it? Isabelia, как будет по? Abundance. We are we are about to reach the age of abundance. We will be more happy and we'll consume less. But it may be very short. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I try to mobilize science, and this, the, why, the reason I do this open access initiatives and the reason I build up repositories in knowledge management, because I think at the moment we don't exist as collective intelligence. If we could have all the knowledge in the world at our fingertips, and if we could work through it together, maybe we could figure out something how we can fix it. But it's not obvious that we can. 
Okay. I, I, I thought you were building up towards the open to, to, towards a bridge towards open access, but then you covered it already. Um, time is also an issue. Paula, uh, how are we doing in time? Can I, do I, I, do I also I want yeah. to open it up to your questions, obviously, but uh, if Paula, are you still here? <laughs> okay, then we just go on. Okay, to make a change, I, 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 you know, I just, we just did an ICO. As a film producer, we are always looking for ways how to finance the making of movies, because I'm working with a director who is very ambitious. He needs a lot of money. And uh, we, we raised more than half, and then we didn't have enough. And we made an ICO. We issued a cryptocurrency. And we managed to get all the money we needed. I think that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, I think for movies and for all cultural products, the, the people who actually consume them, should be the investors. I think, I think the, the whole issue of piracy is going to go away once we have this kind of loop structured in proper way. Okay, I'm sorry, I, you know, I have so, much, so many stories. I'm a journalist. And I'm also sorry, I have, I have more questions on open access. Also another issue that nowadays is very hot in connection with Russia, that's disinformation. But I would say I, I stop here and open it up for your questions. I'm sure. You, you, you should I should I answer this thing about disinformation? It's very easy. Yeah. Okay. If it's easy, <laughs> then please. It's go very ahead. easy. It's very easy. You see, uh, our societies are very complex. It's very hard to manage them. <laughs> there are two ways you can manage them. One is so-called democratic way, when people actually decide by voting, by doing something, etc. But then it comes with experience, you know? And it doesn't end well all the times, you know? Sometimes it goes bad, it goes wrong. Okay? You, you understand me? In Russia, the authorities have uh, KGB background. Stasi, you know? So uh, basically, they don't trust the people. That's the only problem. And uh, I, I don't think they're so kind of evil. I think it is, it is because I don't believe in good and evil. I think it's too black and white, you know? The world is color. So uh, I, think, I think these people, they are, um, as, I, as I explained on the social media issue, I think they are uh, simply um, unable to engineer the system that could work in a different way because as a society, we live through dark age, a little dark age, like 20 years, and uh, we lost our shared values and our shared knowledge. You understand? So we cannot act proactively in a proper way as the people, because we had a little democracy and it ended up this way already. You understand? It is, it is by experience that we know it, it's not theory. I mean, we just try it and you see where we get. So basically there is consensus in Russia that democracy is not the best idea. But at the same time, at the same time, people are very unhappy, mostly because of the issues concerned with nature. Because the city is polluted, because the authorities are taking away the park and building a house there, because you, the water you can't drink, because this plant is saving on uh, cleaning technologies, but making a lot of profit. Because this, because that, you know? So the green, the green stuff is actually building up the civil society in Russia. It's building it up, little by little. Because, it's, 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 it, because nature is something we have in common. And this is why I, I believe there is hope. Because for society to function properly, we have to have values that unite us that we don't fight each other. So nature is such a great thing, huh? Because who, the nature belongs to whom? You know, is it your nature or my nature? It's the same with knowledge. Is this your knowledge or my knowledge? It's our knowledge, right? If I share it, it becomes more. It's not like money, yes? 
And same with culture. It, 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 this, this is the true, I think, the true values. So once, once we will be able to handle the emergency of this new unknowable media, the social media, the new network that we have, once we will be able to master it, to build up institutions and strategies and make our culture available and make, make ourselves function in a new proper way, I think a lot of crazy and strange and scary stuff is going to just go away. Because it's, it's not, because it's, you know, darkness is not an entity. It's not matter. It's the absence of light, you know? So if there is light, then we will be able to see and we will exit the dark ages <laughs> into the wow. era of abundance. <laughs> wow. Okay? Ivan, thank you very much for this okay. very enlightening <laughs> talk. <laughs> stay here, stay here. And I'm sure there are questions. And I'll pass on to Paula. Are there any more questions? I think people are tired with me already, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Well, then, thank you a lot. Okay, no problem.